Today we are going to play around with the Raspberry Pi Pico W and use it to share our computer screen wirelessly to a cheap and easy to make matrix display. So recently the new Raspberry Pi Pico W was released and I had to take a look at it. It's a super easy beginner project and the total cost of the parts is only around $20. Well, I've already made an RP2040 board that adds Ethernet and power over Ethernet capabilities to this remarkable microcontroller, this new development board comes with wireless capabilities and it's really affordable. So I had to try MicroPython for the first time of my life since there were some examples released on the Raspberry block. I installed Tony and tried the simple Wi-Fi controlled LED example. That worked flawlessly. Since MicroPython comes with a NeoPixel library, I thought why not try to use it with one of these nice matrices. I used those to build a simple notification lamp before. You can get them really cheap for like 13 bucks, that's like 5 cents per LED. Check out the links in the description for all the parts used in this project. These matrices are quite easy to connect. The female connector is for data in and the male for data out. So you need to connect a microcontroller that will generate a signal to the female connector. My matrices came even with a male connector for the input side. But you can disorder and use the output connector if you don't need to daisy chain multiple matrices. Since one matrix has 256 LEDs, it might require way more power than your microcontroller can supply from the USB. To supply it with sufficient current, we should attach a 5V DC source to this wire. In my case, black is ground and red is 5V. The easiest way is to use one of these receptacles and screw them on. They even have plus and minus markings. Ground is minus. This is good for now, but I will use one of these for the 3D printed case later. You can use any 5V DC power supply that's capable to deliver at least 2 amps of current. As mentioned before, the microcontroller is connected to this side. You can use simple jumper wires or the extra connector. While the microcontroller is still connected to USB, you should only connect ground, which is white here, to any ground pin, and data, which is green here, to your designated data pin. I use 22. Leave the 5V disconnected while you are still using the USB, otherwise the different 5V sources might conflict. Once you finalize your firmware, connect it to VBus so the microcontroller will be supplied with the 5V from the matrix. Everything plugged in, I can run the first test. Let's run it. That works, sweet. Next, I wanted to use the Wi-Fi capabilities to control the matrix. This is where HTML5 and JavaScript is so beautiful. No matter what operating system you are using, the web browser handles everything for you. You can actually grab the screen contents, extract the pixels and send them to the matrix. I've done that before on stream several times with serial and web sockets. Nothing happens, okay. Oh! We have pink LEDs. Okay, board is functional. WebSockets would be perfect for the Wi-Fi transfer since it doesn't have much overhead. However, here comes the first problem. We need a WebSocket server in MicroPython to receive the data. I found an implementation in the Micro Web Server library. With some struggle I made it work with the Pico. However, there was not enough RAM left for the NeoPixels. That's quite a disadvantage compared to the ESPs which you can buy with external PS RAM. Still, I wanted to make it work. To be successful with MicroPython, I needed to skip all the extra code. An HTML POST request with the pixel data attached should be good enough. It's not the most performant way, but surely a way that skips all the extra libraries. So this is the resulting sketch. You need to enter your Wi-Fi credentials here and upload it. While the Pico is connecting, the IP address is displayed in the console. Copy that. You can also find it on your router later. I will add a way to display the IP on the matrix on boot up later. So we just open the screen share web page from the PC. Now enter the IP address, select the screen to share. And well enough, it shares it. 
Nice. The frame weight is terrible and I think it can be improved with a C++ implementation. Subscribe to this channel to stay updated. But for now, that simple implementation should do it. To make it nicer, I want to put it in a case so I can put it on a shelf or hang it from the wall. I designed a simple back projected case in Blender and printed it. The clue with that one is that it doesn't need any infill. It's optimized for 0.4mm nozzles. There is only a bottom layer with 0.3mm and it's used as a back projection screen. We tested a prior version of that on Brian's stream, where 30mm depth of these channels seemed to be perfect. I used the grey filament here, but the outer walls needed an improvement. So I printed a second version in black with only 20mm of depth. Since the microcontroller is programmed now, I can connect the 5 volts from the matrix. I will use the extra connector now. I also sold on this receptacle. The matrix should fit perfectly in. It has some passive components. The case has also some gaps for that if you orient it correctly. Let's test it. Nice. I adjusted the code to use only a fraction of the maximum brightness. It's plenty bright and keeps the panel and the power supply cooler. At full brightness it might need some proper cooling and putting it in a case probably doesn't help. I linked a detailed tutorial, the code and all the parts below. It's a nice project to make with kids and the parts only cost about $20 for a nice piece of art. The case can be printed in a local makerspace if you don't have a 3D printer at home. If you like this project, please share it with a friend. Thanks to all my supporters and I see you next time. Bye!